all conversations in India around February are taken over by the often debated Indian budget released by the Finance Minister of India. The budget is an official statement of the estimated receipts and expenditure of the government for a fiscal year. The budget presented by means of the finance bill has to be passed by both the houses before it comes into effect from 1st April. There are many other lists of budget documents which are presented to the parliament besides the finance minister's budget speech and can be found online. The big question is, why should you care about the budget? I can give you four reasons why. First, the budget is a fiscal tool. The budget allows you to study patterns in receipt and expenditure. It helps keep tab on the overall fiscal health of the union government and its macroeconomic challenges. This also helps in evaluating the progress made in a particular scheme, grant or government program. Second, the budget is a policy tool. By seeing how much money is being allocated to one ministry over another, you can see the government's policy priorities and vision for that year. It indicates the intent of the government and gives insights on the direction in which we are headed. For example, from the 2018-19 budget, you will see that the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways continued to be high priority because not just did the expenditure increase from 34,345 crore rupees in 2014-15 BE, that is budget estimate, to 71,000 crore rupees in 2018-19 BE. But its share in total government expenditure also increased from 2% to 5%. On the other hand, the Ministry of Rural Development's total expenditure had actually declined during this same period by nearly 13,000 crore rupees and correspondingly its share too. So it could be inferred that for this period, building infrastructure was very important, while perhaps not as much priority was given to rural development. The third good reason to look at the budget is that it can be used as a planning tool to help both plan for the future and learn from the past. So now that we know that the Ministry of Rural Development has been neglected by looking at the budget, we can also tell whether we have allocated enough funds and whether they are being used and used appropriately. For instance, if actual expenditure has consistently been higher than the allocations for SEER schemes such as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, clearly the demand for the scheme is high. Next step in planning could be to think through where the sources for that money would come from. Would it require an additional cess? Would our existing budgets be able to fund it? Finally, of course, for planning, we should collaborate the finances with actual action on the ground. The fourth and most relevant reason for you is that the budget can be used as an accountability tool. We live in a democracy and as taxpayers, it is our right to know how our money is being spent. The truth hides where the money lies. So looking at the budget will give you the precise picture of the government's plans and priority. This way, you can hold the centre and the states accountable for non-appropriate use of the funds, demand answers for missing funds, and most importantly, force every level to be on track to improve the welfare of its citizens. Our voice and our questions can drive the government to improve public services, and the budget forms a framework to monitor government expenditure. It is complicated, but if you are intrigued, 